Hello and welcome to all of you who are joining us today uh, from um, many different countries. We have attendees from the US, from the UK, from Switzerland, and also from other areas beyond Europe and the US. My name is Alessandra Varisco. I'm an international fundraising and development manager at FI, the National Trust for Italy. A trust takes care of the invaluable heritage of Italy, villas, castles, gardens, but also our landscape that is so distinctive and appreciated by so many people around the world. I would like to spend a few words about FI before starting. Um, as I know, many of our attendees are not members yet. Uh, FI was founded in 1975, following the example of the National Trust of uh, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland to take care of special places for the benefit of present and future generations but also to promote education and love for Italian heritage and to protect a beautiful landscape. The foundation acquires by donation or bequest, but also manages properties that are given on concession by the state or local authorities for us to restore and open to the public with events and exhibitions of all kinds. And in total today, uh, FI takes care of 66 properties everywhere in Italy, but we also organize national events to raise the public's awareness about the importance of our cultural heritage. And this is exactly what we're going to talk about today. The incredible job that the foundation does um, is possible really thanks to the um, many members, over 200,000 members and 500 companies that each year donate and join uh, to uh, promote our projects. And, and our work is really possible thanks to people abroad also who care about Italian heritage. Um, this is really important for us uh, and even more so in these very difficult couple of years, uh, as you very well know, uh, cultural institutions worldwide are suffering from months of closure, from restrictions, lack of tourism due to uh, the pandemic. And FI has faced an unprecedented loss last year. Uh, but we were able to hold the fort and also specifically thanks to the gener generosity of many members and donors like you are. Some of them I know are connected today. So on behalf of all of us at FI, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for your continuous support. And uh, also here's an invitation to those of you who are not members and donors yet, but care about Italian heritage. Any help? you may give does make a difference and our work would really be possible only thanks to you. And now a, a few technical recommendations before we start. This webinar will last about uh, 40 minutes. There is a Q&A button uh, that you can use uh, to ask uh, specific questions to uh, tonight's speaker. We might not have the time to answer all the questions but uh, uh, at the end of the session, but uh, we uh, do our best to do uh, so tomorrow or in the next few days. So. Here we go, let's start with our postcards from Italy, Tales from the World of Fi, and here's a theme song. So with the series we're starting today, we would like to give you the opportunity to go more in depth of five properties and collections, but also uh, our most well-known projects like the one we will present today. It is a project that was started about uh, 17 years ago in 2003. And uh, we are uh, today with my colleague, FI colleague Federica Armiraglio, who's our speaker today. Hello, Federica. Hello, everybody, and thank you for the invitation, Alessandra. Well, thank you for joining us. Federica is in charge of uh, I Luoghi del Cuore, which has been translated with Italian Places I Love, one of the main national projects of the uh, foundation. Federica is an art historian with uh, study and work experiences in Italy and abroad, 
uh, she, uh, among which the Metropolitan Museum in New York. And she has been for over 10 years uh, curators of the um, Museo della Collegiata in Castiglione Olona. Uh, near Varese. She published several books, such as the uh, Leggenda di Adamo ed Eva, I Luoghi del Cuore for Rizzoli, and the Afterwards of to Vincent, Mayo Fratello by Elizabeth Van Gogh, and uh, Diario dal Carcere by Igon Schiele. So uh, I pass the baton to uh, Federica for her presentation. Thank you. Okay, thanks again. And let's start with Places I Love or Il Luogo del Cuore, no, <laughs> sorry, just, I just forgot to share my screen. Okay, now you should see it. Okay, this is our cover with uh, Italy and many postcards from Italy in a gigantic heart with the colors of our flags, green, white, and red. And uh, uh, we find them also on this uh, pencil, which is which has to recall the, the gestures of writing a postcard to tell Fi which is the place you love. Um, the um, Places I Love is a, a survey, um, and it is based uh, on a very um, simple idea, the idea that everybody has at least one place he loves, which means a place we, places we are attached to, places that are part of our family tradition, of our personal memory, of our collective um, identity, uh, of our social communities, of our personal background. Um, the, the success has been almost immediate. We launched the first survey in 2003, and we received over 24,000 votes for several different sites. But the success of the survey grew and grew throughout the decades, as we are going to, um, as we are going to see. Um, because of the simplicity of the idea, but also because what we understood throughout the service is that people are attached to the heritage. It means something to them. They want them to see protected and enhanced. And of course, um, the brand reputation of FI and also the fact that the foundation has been more and more acknowledged as a major institution in Italy, just aside the Minister of Culture for the Protection of Heritage, made the success of our survey, uh, which is absolutely concrete. As you can see in 10 um, surveys, we gathered almost 10 million votes for over 39,000 places spread all over Italy in um, over the 82% of Italian municipalities. And the votes are made by, well, Mm, simple citizens who decided to vote for one um, specific site, but also for many committees, over 1,300 in the 10 um, surveys. Um, so groups of people, they can be in municipalities themselves or mm, associations, uh, established association, or just groups of friends who decide to get together and gather um, these postcards to vote for their places um, to be loved. To be loved because many of these places, as we are going to see throughout the presentation, have several problems of conservations. And the um, survey works because, of course, FI gives a lot of communication. Media, the media loves um, the idea of the heritage that required protection, uh, monuments that are in decay, uh, and people who um, tell through the survey, through FI survey, that, well, these monuments need to be um, protected, restored, and enhanced. And we can see the growth of the survey uh, throughout its 10 editions. It is due also to another very important factor. As you can see in the bottom line, we decided after 2004 to run the survey every two years uh, because we have to manage uh, a really big data, as we will say now, really a, a huge amount of votes for 
thousand, several thousand uh, different places, but also because we decided through, thanks to the funding, to the funding of Intesa San Paolo Bank to um, support projects um, in favor of the most voted sites in the, um, the sub, in, in, in the other, in, in the years where we don't run the survey. And we are going to see uh, that um, the effects of these um, beautiful projects um, are really pretty astonishing because even um, in the cases where FI decide, decides to support a project, but even um, in the other where FI doesn't, the um, resonance, the communication arose around these places really can change their destinies in an unprecedented ways. This is the first success of the um, of the survey. A small mill in a small valley in Val Brembana in uh, Lombardy. Uh, the mill um, has a, a curious story. It was funded in 1672 in the Prealps, and it has been a bakery, a furnace, a workshop of a blacksmith. A cheese nut, a cheese hut, a stone press for machine, uh, a stone press for nuts. Um, but it, so you can understand, it was the center of its um, very small community. And um, as you probably saw in the um, preceding slide, uh, it gathered only uh, one thousand. Well, not even two thousand votes. That were very few, but the whole community, every single citizen voted for this small mill that Phi acquired, restored, and gave back to the to an association of Roncobello, so of, of the a very small town uh, to manage its um, uh, to, to manage it. So it is open to the public as a FI property, but run um, from an association of by an association of Roncobello. This is the Columbaya Fortress in uh, Trapani in Sicily. We are at the third survey that was won by the Columbaya with almost 7,000 votes. So you can see the progression. The fortress is absolutely astonishing. It is, um, it is on, on an island. It has been built on an island in the third century before Christ um, in front, I'm oh, sorry, in front of the ancient, oh, what happened? Sorry, pressed something. Okay. In front of the ancient arbor of Trapani, the Grand Tower is medieval, um, has been built in the 13th century. It was enlarged in the 16th century to contrast pirates um, in the Mediterranean Sea. And it was finally transformed into a prison for political opponents in, uh, in the 19th century. And it, was, it, it worked as a prison until 1965, when it was totally abandoned. And as you can see, it started to decay. Um, it won the survey in 2008, and for almost 10 years, in, in, in the 10 years, in the preceding 10 years, it was at the center of the very complicated bureaucratic plot with six institutions involved. And even it, it, it was really incredible, even if there were actually money in, at disposal to start the restorations, it was impossible to use them due to this very complex plot. Uh, but um, thanks to the victory at the survey and the pressure that FI started to make on the institutions, it was possible for the Sicilian region to acquire it. And you can see the internal part, internal courtyard of the um, uh, Columbaya uh, restored. Um, it has not yet been completed, not yet really open to the public. It, it is also on an island, so it's not that easy to um, to go and visit it. But uh, it is seldom uh, well open to the public. And anyway, these restorations has been absolutely fundamental and the region means to continue them and finally find a new life for the Columbaya. Here we find another uh, a, a, a treasure. This is a, a, military, a military master, one of the grandest examples of 18th century fortifications still existing in this state of conservation in Europe. We can find it, we, we can see it from the sea. 
it has this star um, shape. Um, it has been built in Alessandria in uh, Piedmont um, in uh, 1726, when Alessandria passed under the control of the Savoy uh, family. A whole neighborhood was destroyed to make space to the, hu to the huge fortress. So it was really uh, an operation of city planning, we would say today. Uh, an engineer, Ignazio Bertola, draw inspiration from the French fortress of Vauban um, to build this enormous fortress with over 20 buildings um, that covers 49 acres. So it, it's really huge. Um, and up to the, it, Napoleon also used it as one of his key fortress for the, um, the conquer of Italy um, in, the, in the end, uh, at the beginning of the 19th century. And up to 2007, it was used as a, bar as a barracks and then totally abandoned once again. Uh, and also, um, we don't see it here, but many part of the roofs were covered by ailantus. Um, that was really a huge danger to the maintenance and conservation of the fortress because many roofs due to the weight of ailantus um, started to collapse. Um, the citadel won the um, survey in 2012 with over 53,000 votes and that drew so much attention to the fortress that the Italian government um, decided to spread sponsor a 25 million euros fund to the restoration of the citadel and Piedmont region um, put also 9 million of euros to the restoration of this incredible um, fortress that is open to the visits thanks to FI because uh, a local delegation, so volunteers of FI open the um, citadel to the visits. Um, we are in Liguria now, a completely different set. We are at the sea with a cloister of Monte Rosso. So we are in the Gulf of Poets. Um, the uh, monastery, the cloister, is on top of a, rook, of a rock that overlooks the bay, and it is visible from the whole coast. It's a true landmark of the landscape of the Cinque Terre. But unfortunately, the Cinque Terre are a very fragile landscape, and we can see here what happened um, due, due to the hydrologi hydrogeological instability in, of the coast. Unfortunately, during... Um, 2013 flood, the rock wall landslided and uh, part of the garden of the cloister um, really fell down to the sea. But thanks to the victory uh, of the survey in 2014, um, the garden was restored and the um, cloister had the possibilities to gain more funds um, from uh, um, the region um, to well, reopen to the public. Now we are in Tuscany for Calci Charter House, one of the most important charter houses in uh, uh, Italy, founded in 1366 in a valley not far from Pisa. It's some 20 kilometers apart from Pisa. Um, in a sort of um, a small valley, the Val Graziosa, uh, because as you may know, the Carthusian cloisters um, had to be built in, uh, um, well, in very silent uh, landscapes in green also landscapes to favor of course the concentration and um, the prey the isolation was prescribed by saint bruno when he, he funded the Carthusian order in uh, um, 1084 um, and it was a, a very simple monastery during the middle ages but with uh, the sanctification of bruno in 1623 as it happened to many other um, Carthusian cloisters it was transformed into a splendid baroque palace with several um, cloisters. You can see the frescoes of uh, the church. Uh, the walls are completely covered by fresco. Not a single centimeter is um, a void. Um, we can see the refectory here. And uh, to one of the cloisters, this is uh, on two different levels with this wonderful porch. This other cloister that was um, built, it is known as the old cloister, built in the 15th century, um, 
needed um, restorations. You can see in the upper part, it still needs restoration, unfortunately. Um, but the, um, when the, um, the um, Charter House um, uh, joined the second place in 2014 with over, four, uh, with over 92,000 uh, votes um, gathered from the University of Pisa. Even the mayor uh, wrote to his fellow citizens asking them to vote uh, to places I love for, the, um, for their charter house. Well, we funded uh, with um, 50,000 euros the restoration of uh, these beautiful cloisters where um, the decorations that you can see on the bottom wall has been rediscovered under the, the a layer of plaster. And uh, um, after our, the, the funding received from FI and all these enormous visibility gained by the uh, Charter House, the um, Ministry for Culture uh, came to visit the Charter House. Um, no minister was there um, in the preceding 40 years. And after his visit, the minister, well, it, it actually belongs to the state. This is important to say. And the Ministry of Culture decided to um, give a support of 10,000, almost 10,000, uh, mm, 10 million, sorry, 10 million euros. Uh, for restoration of the roof um, of the church, of the monks' cells, and of other parts of the charter house. This is the um, pharmacy, the, the ancient pharmacy of the charter house, which is a museum open to the visits. But unfortunately, just um, behind um, the uh, charter house, uh, this mountain, the Monte Pisano, um, was destroyed, almost destroyed by a fire in 2018 by an arson, most unfortunately. So the citizens of Calci decided once again to use the powerful instrument of the um, of FI survey, places I love to uh, tell aloud that they want their landscape to be protected. You can see what happened here uh, during the, the fire. It, it really reached the, the walls of the charter house of Calci. And uh, once again, the powerful um, instrument that places I love is not only gave a funding of once again 50 a thousand euros by FI, but also the um, Tuscany region gave another important funding of several um, thousand euros to uh, maintain the, the landscape and uh, uh, try to preserve it from uh, other um, fires that happened in the past, unfortunately, too often. And we come here to the um, 2020 survey, and maybe it would be nice to see a small video um, that uh, I prepare for you with the 10 most voted places. So I interrupt the condivision of my, the sharing of my presentation. So we can watch this small um, video. Uh, that shows the 10 most voted places in 2020.
Okay, so you have seen our 10 winners of the 2020 survey. And now I go back to my presentation to introduce some more things. Please, okay. Some more information about the winners of these other extraordinary um, edition of the survey that gathered over uh, two millions and uh, three hundred, uh, two millions and six hundred thousand votes. Um, the um, the survey is always full of surprises. We are art historians, archaeology, uh, our, um, archaeologists, um, architectures working at FI. Um, and many times we have no idea. Um, we don't know at all um, the sites um, that win the same, uh, that win the survey. Um, we are always the first to be surprised by the uh, incredible variety, dispersion, and um, uh, heterogeneity of Italian heritage, which is really a wonder, even for us. Um, so the survey, as a surprise, was won by a railway. This is an historical railway, Cuneo Ventimiglia Nice in, in France. So it is an international um, railway that won with 7,500, um, 7,500, sorry, votes. As you can see, it runs in the mountains uh, in a wonderful, um, in a wonderful landscapes. And it was born in the, um, as an idea of um, Camillo Benso, the Count of Cavour, a great statesman in Italy at the mid of the 19th century. Um, he was the political leader of Piedmont when it was under the Savoy in house, as it was Nice, so the, the, the French town, uh, which was also under the Savoy house. And Cavour meant to establish, to create this important infrastructure to um, put into connection Piedmont and uh, the Nice county. But then Nice was assigned to France in 1860. And so uh, Cavour's plan was suspended. But um, finally, Italy decided to build uh, the railway, not just between, not just to link Piedmont and France, France, but also Piedmont and Liguria. Uh, the railways is absolutely um, wonderful. The works began, began in 1882 uh, and the inauguration was in um, 1928. In uh, not even 100 kilometers of extension, it is uh, 96 kilometers long, it covers 1,000 meters of difference in altitude with 33 galleries and 27 bridges. But its history was very um, difficult um, because um, in 1943, with the withdrawal of the German troops from Italy, um, the German soldiers decided to um, to mine the the to destroy the the great part of the um, of the galleries and of the bridges as we can see here um, and only in the 70s with a special um, agreement between France and Italy uh, the railways uh, the railway has been uh, um, reconstructed but the votes has been gathered because since it runs in the mountains um, both France and, um, and the Piedmont region almost decided to um, closed the railway. These manas arrived in 2013. And once again, FI, not through the survey, um, but through um, another um, a, a, a local movement, um, raised awareness of the necessity of uh, protecting and maintaining this very important infrastructure, uh, which has not been dismissed. But once again, these manas, this risk of dismission ar arose last Last year, and also um, 2020 flood in the Roya um, Valley, which is exactly at the core of the railway in between France, uh, 
Piedmont and Liguria really uh, at the center where the Colle di Tenda uh, almost collapsed um, under the, the flood. So the, the, the railway was interrupted once again and the, voted, uh, and the votes were, were gathered to um, make the states, so both Italy and France, understand that people living, the, living in the valleys um, absolutely need their infrastructure and we are absolutely positive in thinking that we are we can we could do uh, something to make their voices heard by um, both minist ministries in Italy and in France. Um, in the video, you probably uh, were struck by the wonderful images of Samizzano Castle, not far from Florence, 30 kilometers away from Florence in Tuscany. Uh, uh, Samizzano already won the 2016 survey. Um, but it has voted again because it belongs to um, private property um, that went to failure some years ago. Uh, the castle had to be sold, but uh, no acquirer arrived. Of course, uh, we deal about seven, uh, several millions of euros to acquire the castle and many more to um, make the necessary restoration works. So it has been voted again because um, the old property um, actually closed the failure. And so everybody, two very uh, fighting committees in Reggello, um, hope that uh, through the visibility gain uh, with the survey, um, even the state would push uh, will push the property to make these conservation uh, works. As you can see, um, there are wonderful um, halls, 13 monumental halls um, that drew inspirations from um, uh, Moresque and Indians, most of all, uh, works of art. The castle um, was a hunting estate during the 16th century for the Altoviti a family, a family um, very close to the Medici. But then it was transformed in this um, oriental uh, mood by uh, the Marquis Ferdinando Panciati Jimenez d'Aragona. Uh, he was um, in, in, in the mid 19th century. He was uh, a collectioner, um, an expert of um, architecture, engineer, uh, passionate for botanic, um, a very important figure, a very important character for the cultural life of Florence. At the time, he was also a politician. He funded many cultural institutions. He decided to mm, he decided to to withdraw in uh, San Mezzano his property and to transform it into these. Um, this oriental dream as it still is it, it, it's a really a, an incredible um an incredible castle surrounded by a gigantic part and we really hope that even through this um success at the sorry at the um survey places i love um its sort will change its destiny its destiny will change and not only it will be it's going to be completely restored but also we really hope that um it will become accessible to the public because no one can visit it right now the third place has been uh, gained by the another castle a completely different one the castle of brescia in lombardy um which was um a very important um, third place because Brescia has been together with Bergamo um, the symbols, uh, the symbol in Italy of the pandemic spread of COVID-19. Um, so we are really happy that the symbol of this city um, that grew um, with the growth of the city itself, it was funded. In, it was funded by the. Roman Empire and then transformed during the Middle Ages. You can see this big tower of the 14th century and other parts has been built in the 16th century, other again in the 19th century. Really, um, its history really grew um, with the one of the of the city. Um, we really hope that this victory would help Brescia also to recover uh, from the shock of the the pandemic um, of the pandemic. This is again the Brescia Castle. 
uh, we are now talking about the municipality, which is the property, um, the, the castle is property of the municipality of Brescia to uh, agree on which project uh, we can donate our 30,000 euros funding uh, to support some restoration of the castle. As I told you, thanks to the partnership with um, Intesa San Paolo Bank, every two years, FI funds um, supports some projects um, coming actually from the territories for uh, some of the most voted sites. And we do it in two ways. Um, we have funds for the winners, of course, the three winners so out of merit. Um, of the survey, uh, 50,000, 40,000, and 30,000 euros for the first, the second, and the, uh, the third winners. Of course, for um, there has to be assigned to concrete projects uh, to be um, decided together with FI, but also we have. Um, um, uh, we have a project, um, a platform, let's say, um, to which um, every the property of every site that gained at least 2,000 votes at the survey, uh, which means for 2020, uh, 221 sites, they can candidate um, a, a project of um, restoration, of conservation, of uh, um, um, landscape engineer or even enhancing of the site, the promotion of the site, so they can candidate to fight these projects. And um, uh, throughout these actions, we have funded 119 projects in 19 regions so far. So far, as you can see, 41 devoted to churches or cloisters, 32 to natural sites, 24 to architectural sites. 13 to urban sites and 9 to archaeological sites. The funding given by FI are well pretty small. The maximum uh, that we um, that we can give is um, as I told before um, it's 50,000 euros, so it is not much for the conservation of uh, uh, a monument. Um, but we um, ask uh, the properties to arise uh, co-sponsoring from the territory, from the local institutions. And many times, local institutions themselves decide spontaneously, spontaneously uh, to listen to the voice of their citizens and to provide themselves um, to support projects and uh, restorations for these. Um, important monuments, monuments that are symbols for the for the local communities, and so it, it, in some way, FI creates establishes a bridge between the voices of the citizens. Um, often, really unheard by local institutions and the local you know, institutions institutions that, of course. Um, are in charge of the protections of these monuments. And many, many times, um, the, the destiny of these monuments, these sites, these natural landscapes, these archaeological sites really uh, dramatically changed. Um, and so we are absolutely very proud. And I want to present to you um, two um, projects um, that were um, pretty special um, to us. But you can find, um, if you're curious, all the 119 projects supported by FI through uh, Places I Love Project um, on well, watching the website um, ilwagidelcuore.it. Unfortunately, just in Italian, but if you use Google from abroad, actually Google translates it automatically. This is a small church in San Salvatore Church in uh, uh, Campi di Norcia. Um, I guess many of you had here had heard about Norcia that had been struck in 2016 by a terrible earthquake. This was the church between Norcia is there, the small town on the top of the hill. Um, this church uh, built in the, during the Middle Ages was very important to the uh, local community. This was before the earthquake. Uh, it conserved wonderful frescoes of the 14th century. And this was what happened with the earthquake of 2016. Um, the church collapsed almost entirely, just the back wall was preserved, uh, but it was possible um, 
working together with the um, Ministry of Culture, of course, it was possible to support a project to build a roof and to, uh, you can see it as it is now, to start the restorations and to gather all the small fragments of rock and of frescoes in um, um uh, in um, um, a shelter, a storage ran by the uh, Ministry of Culture in Umbria and like a puzzle rebuilt um, in this storage, the frescoes, well, the, the, the frescoes as well, the, to put together again, the pieces conserved, so far conserved, and the next phase uh, that actually had to start in the um, in 2020, and of course it was impossible due to due to the pandemic. Well, the next step will be to put them together um, and to put them back in place in the Church of San Salvatore. Uh, a totally different monument. This is a wonderful park that maybe some of you visited in uh, Liguria. It is in a um, neighborhood of uh, Genova. It is called uh, Pegli. It's a wonderful park, one of the most important romantic gardens in Europe. We can see it here. Um, and at the beginnings of the 19th century, Pegli was absolutely a quiet suburb um, at the western periphery of uh, Genova, uh, full of many parks and villas of the aristocracy. But tourism um, put Pegli to a deep transformation. In 1856, uh, um, it was completely the um, railway between Genova and Torino, and um, a, um, a railway station was built in Pegli itself. Um, and so the um, tour tourists from all over Europe um, arrived not just to the uh, seaside, but also arrived in Pegli to visit the wonderful villas of the aristocracy. So the Marquis Ignazio Pallavicini, um, in charge um, architect, but also scenographer of the um, Teatro Carlo Felice in Genova, Michele Canzio, to transform the huge park that surrounded his villa in a, a wonderful romantic garden. Um, the lake is artificial, for example, and you can see the Chinese bridge and the romantic temple. There is a whole plot um, throughout the um, the park as a sort of um, opera in uh, uh, three acts with a prologue and, um, and a epilogue. Um, and the park, which is absolutely incredible, if you um, ever happen to go to Genova, absolutely stop in Pelli and go and visit the park, um, was almost um, abandoned due to the construction of the um, uh, highway. Um, I don't have a picture, maybe I should have put put one in the presentation because there there is a bridge of the highway passing absolutely on top of the garden and so the garden was almost abandoned and uh, of course uh, started to decay um, af before uh, after uh, the construction of the highway in, nine, in the 70s and just in the um, in the new century uh, it has been uh, partly restored and um, after this success of the park um, at the survey we decided to fund um, the um, reconstruction of this small um, monument, which is called the um, uh, Kiosk of Roses. The park was very famous for these for his water games, and um, this um, kiosk is uh, at the very end of the epilogue. So, at the very end of the of this narration that Michele Canzio put into scenes um, in the landscape um, of. Uh, of the Villa Durazzo Pallavicini, of the Durazzo Pallavicini Park, actually. Um, and so through our support, the kiosk has been uh, rebuilt. And now it is possible, again, for the visitors to enter um, this uh, small hall at the center and uh, uh, discover the water games that take place, again, thanks to the funding of FI. So here I finish my presentation. Hope it has been interested for everybody. Well, thank you. Thank you, Federica, for this amazing tour around Italy. I think uh, I have a feeling we did so many kilometers uh, in <laughs> half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, 
it's really been an incredible journey and you are terrific in managing this fascinating project for FI. Uh, so I wish you, uh, um, you know, continue to continue to uh, cast votes in the um, upcoming editions uh, in the next uh, in the next few years and have the uh, success and even more success as you have done until now. So, so thank you. Thank you very much, Federica. Uh, we have come to the end of this uh, of our event. We are looking forward um, to seeing you on, for our next webinars. You will receive our invitations. Uh, the upcoming one is an exclusive event for five members and donors. And it is a documentary film on uh, world-renowned collector Giuseppe Panza di Biumo, who donated his villa and the collection to FI. Uh, it will be a streaming event on Wednesday, uh, March the 31st, at the end of the, uh, um, uh, still at the same time, 7 p.m. Europe and uh, 6 p.m. UK time, and 1 p.m. Eastern summer time. Uh, you uh, can see uh, here, there are some websites you have, uh, you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to know more about FI and also uh, our email addresses, please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any queries uh, or if you would like more information. And also if you live in the UK and the US or in Switzerland, make sure you get in touch with our charities uh, in these countries so that you can uh, receive updates and information about their local initiatives. So I want to thank you all for uh, attending and staying with us, depending on where you are. I wish you all a good afternoon or a good evening. Ci vediamo, bye bye. Thank you and support FI. <laughs> we need you. Thank you.